Hello everybody and welcome to the second video on optimization. Um, we have the problems dealing with cost and profit and all that good stuff. So just to run through this real quick, um, watch the first video for an in-depth um, look at optimization. Uh, I talk about all the steps and really go into detail about what to do. This one's more of like just to show you how this problem is done. Okay, um, so what we're dealing with here is profit. Okay, and I'm going to put a little, I remember I told you guys there's a little tail with this P. Okay, um, we're dealing with profit. Now, profit is, profit is revenue minus cost. Okay, revenue minus cost. That'll tell you how much profit a company is making. Um, revenue is defined as the number of units times the price they sell at. Okay, the price per unit. That'll give you the revenue. Um, and cost is obviously we're given up here. Now, we're going to look through the five steps again of optimization. Step one, identify the parts. We are given that P, the pr P is the price, C is the cost, X is the number of units, capital P is profit, R is revenue, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, now, we have a primary equation. It's the thing being min or maxed. In this case, it's being maxed is the profit. So our primary equation is right here, P equals R minus C. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to, I need to get revenue to only have one variable here. So I'm actually going to replace the P with the little tail with a 36 minus 4X. Okay, I'm going to multiply that out and I get 36X minus 4X squared. And that's my revenue function. My cost function's up here. I'm going to put both of those in for P and I get P equals 36X minus 4X squared minus 2X squared plus 32. All right, I'm basically just replacing. This is like step three. Step three is replace uh, the variables in your primary or with um, the secondary equations, the things you solve for, okay? Uh, combine like terms here, I get negative 6x squared plus 36x minus 32. All right, there's our primary equation. Now we need to look at step four because I've kind of been going through the steps. Step four is domain. Remember, it's the only thing in this domain is that x has to be greater than zero. Um, that's because we're dealing with numbers, uh, number of units produced. You wouldn't be producing negative amounts of units. So x has to be greater than zero. I'm going to just write that if I can find in my pen. I'm going to write that over here. x just has to be bigger than zero. Um, all right, so now we need to maximize this. How do we do that? Take the derivative, set it equal to zero. I get negative 12x plus 36. I solve, I get x equals three, which means three units would maximize our profit, all right? Now, remember, we do want to check to see that that is a max, so we make our intervals. It goes from zero to three, from three to infinity. We want to check those out, so I'm going to take a number in that range, a number in that range, plug it into my derivative. I get positive, negative which means three is a maximum. Yay, so that means if x is three, then our profit is maxed, but we still have another part. It says find the price per unit. The price per unit unit is written as that p with a little tail, so I plug x in for there, and I get $24, okay? That's it, that's how to maximize the profit. All right, very similar to the previous problem, the previous optimization video, okay? Um, that's all it really is to it. Now, there is a part B for this problem, so I'm going to erase all of this. Uh, part B says, how many units should be produced to min minimize the average cost per unit? Now, average cost per unit is not our cost function. It is actually cost with a little hat, all right? And that's our cost function divided by x. So we take our cost function, which is 2x squared plus 32. I divide by x, all right, I'm gonna break it up. So we're eventually going to be taking the derivative, 32 over x. All right, 
And <clears throat> now there's our primary equation. Now our primary equation only has one variable in it. So we don't need a secondary equation. The secondary equation is always just so that we can make the primary equation only have one variable. Now, for this one, since it's already in one variable, all we do is take the derivative. The only thing we need to remember is that x has to be greater than 0. It's our domain, step 4. So I take the derivative of my function, I set it equal to 0, I get 2 minus 32 over x squared. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I solve this, negative 2 equals negative 32 over x squared, cross multiply, negative 2x squared equals negative 32 squared equals 16, take the derivative, or square root, I get plus or minus 4, but we know minus 4 is not greater than 0, so it's eliminated, and 4, we would have to just check in our interval, right, take a number in that range, number in that range, plug it into the derivative, <clears throat> our derivative is right here, I'm going to plug it into the derivative, I get minus plus, which means it is a minimum. It goes from decreasing to increasing, which means x equals 4 is a minimum. All right, and that's what would answer the question. So x being 4 is the minimum would, would then minimize the average cost per unit. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I really hope this helps. Good luck, guys.